Eric's been with us since December of last year, right? Yeah. December 21st, I think it was. So um, I'll turn it over to Eric. Okay. Hey, thanks. Hi, everybody. I'm Eric Schultz with Realities for Children, Boulder County. And I apologize that um, Stan's equipment and mine are not on speaking terms. A uh, therapist would be good right now, probably, to help communicate. <laughs> So I can't do uh, the regular presentation. So we'll be a little, uh, we'll wing it a little bit and be a little uh, informal. But I will use some of this as a guide. Um, what I will, I'll, I'll read off kind of our mission statement, and then I'll do a little bit of a deeper dive into why Realities for Children even exists to begin with. Um, Realities for Children Boulder County is a business membership organization devoted to two causes. First, we positively and permanently impact the lives of at-risk youth, childhood victims of abuse and neglect, and those who have been removed from their biological homes through the foster kinship care system. Second, we increase member profitability by building member-to-member -member relationships and informing consumers of the goods and services provided by businesses who care about this community, reinvest consumer dollars locally, and provide the light of hope and opportunity to those who know nothing but darkness. Realities for children, Boulder County business members, walking through every door, heart first. Um, so that's our mission. Um, I'll deviate from this a little bit and just kind of give you a little bit of a background. Um, so, um, this really started for me when I was 15 years old. Um, my, myself, my friend Randy, and my friend Dan, as 15-year-olds in very rural Pennsylvania, we still don't have a stoplight in the town I grew up in, um, and there were no rec centers, there's nothing like that. So there are two things to do. Um, one was to stay at home and work in the family farm. The other was to go out with your friends and get in trouble. I was really good at both. <laughs> And uh, my friend Randy, Dan, and I, as 15-year-olds, we got into our share of trouble. And we were in the, um, we had probation officers through the trouble that we got in. So we were in the juvenile justice system at that point. And so we had various trajectories that we could go. We were good kids. We were laissez-faire, um, just you know, running amok in the neighborhood is what we were doing. Myself, I had two parents who loved me unconditionally. And so I got into a lot of trouble. My father and mother were very clear in their messaging. What you did was absolutely wrong. You're going to be held accountable 125%. I think my dad hit about 200%, frankly. But, um, and we know that what you did was not a reflection of the content of your character. You're a great person, and we know that. And uh, we're going to shepherd you through this process. Fantastic. Um, the same was true for my friend Randy and his parents. My friend Dan, it was totally different. And I met Dan's father, and Dan's father was a very intense alcoholic. And it was the first time I had ever witnessed abuse. Dan was a big strapping guy. You know, I was a big strapping guy. Dan could have taken me in a fight any day. And I witnessed Dan be very horribly abused by his father. And it was a light coming on in my life. And it really drove home my deep appreciation to the blessing I had of having healthy parents. And uh, Randy and I are still best of friends. Um, we just texted each other this morning. He's still in Pennsylvania. My friend Dan went down a whole different path and uh, got into deep substance abuse. He died of a heroin overdose in his 20s. And uh, so it was a very enlightening moment for me. And as a 16-year-old, I wrote an essay about unconditional love, the impact of that on my life and my parents, and how someday it was my dream to open up a group home for kids like Dan, who didn't have healthy parents. Um, I opened up Polaris House Transitional Living Program 14 years ago, and we've had 100 and almost 160 kids live there from the foster um, care system since that point. And so I got to achieve that goal that I, uh, crafted for myself as a 16-year-old. Through that path, I worked as I was co-director for the Shelter for the Homeless many years ago, and I kind of was diverting from working with uh, juveniles. And I realized I really 
wanted to get back into prevention of homelessness. And so then I worked with the Mental Health Center and the St. Green Valley School District, and I managed an adolescent treatment program. Um, then I worked for Boulder County Housing and Human Services, or Social Services, then, and my specialty was abuse and neglect. And so I had my caseload, I was in court constantly, and that was my big focus. And that was an enlightening experience, to say the least, working with kids and families in those situations. And that's when I also started my first um, nonprofit 14 years ago. It was called Sage Community Partnership. I went into that line of work not because I had a business background, but because I saw a hole in the dike, and I was the one standing there, so I stuck my finger in it, um, and I created a business. I knew nothing about running a business. I knew about service. And uh, so through that process, though, what was fascinating for me was the interface between nonprofits and the private business sector. And I would go around to businesses and talk to businesses and, uh, you know, gosh, it just seemed like such a narrow conversation around, well, gosh, can you sponsor one of our fundraising events or can you contribute to a silent auction item? And businesses, many of them were like, I don't have a philanthropic budget. I really want to participate somehow, though. And I was like, gosh, I don't know how we can interface. And it just seemed vacant. And so I kept trying to figure out there's got to be a better way. And then a friend of mine had met a friend of ours named Craig Secker up in Fort Collins who started Realities for Children in Boulder County. And she came down, and she was on my board of directors and said, this is what you've been talking about for three years. And so I fell in love with the business model. And so Realities for Children, what it does is it's a ridiculous nonprofit business model. It's different than anything you've ever seen. And what it does is create a win-win-win for everyone. It takes a traditional nonprofit, as you might know, generally has industry standard is from 20 to 35 percent administrative costs from the revenue that comes in. We've all heard nightmare scenarios of nonprofits that are egregious and that kind of stuff. That's not the norm, um, but you know, we know that. You know, that's you hear of those terrible circumstances. Uh, but the industry standard is 20 to 35 percent. What Reality for Children did or Craig Secker, the founder, is he had this brainstorm of, gosh, well, let's serve the business community better and serve donors better and thus serve kids better. So what he did was he started essentially two businesses. One is a nonprofit marketing and promotional membership organization. So businesses join it in membership, as Eve has talked about before, and there's others in here, too. And then Realities for Children markets and promotes those businesses to consumers throughout Boulder County, up in Larimer County, of course, is where Craig is, and messages the fact that these are businesses that when you spend your dollars with these businesses, your money stays in this community. It's not flying out to Indianapolis or overseas. It's staying here, and it's being recycled for the good of this community and for the future of our youth. So when you have a choice, and we always have a choice, keep your money local, support local businesses and businesses that care. That membership covers administrative costs so that the charity operates for free. The charity has no administrative costs. So 100% of every donor dollar, every penny goes directly to our kids. 100%, donors love that. Our job is to make sure donors know these are the businesses that make that happen for you. So please eat lunch at Blooming Beats. Invest your money through Brightside. Um, that's what we do for our businesses. And we also have relationship building amongst our business members. So we create those relationships because really our business members walk through doors heart first. They want to do business with each other and they give each other discounts and all that kind of stuff. Ultimately, it serves our nonprofit organization. So Polaris House, I still have it. Like I said, we've uh, given safe harbor to over 160 youth now, um, which has been just phenomenal um, for me. We also do emergency services. We, we're very collaborative. So we don't, I mean, you guys know about our business sector and how competitive it can be. Nonprofits can be even more so. Because the traditional model is there's a, there's a pie of donor dollars out there. And, uh, you know, I'm going to elbow my way to get a bigger slice of that pie. We reject that wholeheartedly. Our, our focus is that 
by coming together as nonprofit organizations, we raise all votes. We do that with our business members, we do that with our nonprofits. I exist to help nonprofits, not compete with them. We don't um, write grants for monies, we don't compete with our nonprofits that way. Besides uh, Polaris House, I have no kids to serve. What I do for clients is I partner with 10 other nonprofit organizations, both school districts, um, the foster care system, I have a Dream Foundation, Voices for Children, they refer kids to us. And then I help their kids in ways that they can't. We're corporate sponsors of a lot of those nonprofits' fundraising events. We get technology to them, support, volunteers. We help our nonprofits grow. So it's just a big collaboration. And then what we also do, obviously, is scholarships. So we have a unique relationship with the University of Colorado so that our contribution there is matched in various ways and we can distribute, actually starting this year, we can move up to four if I can find the youth, um, about $100,000 scholarships for these kids from Boulder County Foster Care to go to see you. And then we also provide scholarships to go to at-large organization or uh, institutions like Front Range, things like that. So our job is to not just help suffering, but to change these lives permanently. One little anecdote of Polaris House was I shifted the model from a foster care group home to a transitional living program, and it had never been done before. Our board, we couldn't even find anything in the country that looked like what we envisioned. There was one kid who was sentenced to two years at the Department of Youth Corrections to the cost of taxpayers of about $220 a day. I went to court and I said, give us one chance with this kid. One chance. He came to Polaris House. After a year and a half, he had finished all his probation, paid off all his fines, graduated high school, had a job, saved money, had first last month's rent, transitioned out, was doing great. It cost taxpayers about $2,000 instead of close to $200,000 for this kid. He's doing great. So the, the point being is that when we give this attention to these kids, we turn them from tax dependents, being in the Department of Youth Corrections, to a tax participant in our community. And we change lives forever. So that's what we do um, and why we do it. How can we help? Oh, golly. <laughs> uh, being business members, we really, um, we do a lot of things different than Fort Collins does. Um, and one thing we're really now doing is bringing our business members into leadership positions, um, expanding our board, our committee, so that it's really populated by business members to help drive the vision of this into the future. So leadership capacity would be fantastic. Um, working with kids uh, directly. We're about to, we have a board meeting tonight, and we're looking at calving off our Polaris House and scholarship program into its own nonprofit standalone that's completely operated by foster youth. And they're in positions of leadership. They're doing the books. They're the executive directors, all of that. So helping us get that started, uh, there's a ton of different ways. Cool, what about like another fundraiser? If we like put together a fundraiser, with all these guys here at the restaurant. I'm wide open to any ideas. Like you folks did at Blooming Beats, you raised I think $3,500 yeah. for one girl to go to Metro State. Mm. Um, yeah, so, so I'm just gonna throw it out there. So what we did at Blooming Beats, is that okay? So what we did sure. is we had about 40 people in there and everybody paid 50 bucks and we got a bunch of sponsors to provide great food and you know, and drinks and things like that, and you know, we send uh, we send Jasmine, who's you know a girl who's been through a lot through college, and it was awesome. So, would anybody be interested in participating if we put together something like that? Awesome. Looks like almost everybody. All right. Well, we can brainstorm that. Yeah. I will take it on. business <laughs> business. <laughs> What's the donation that you usually request? Well, there's different tiers. So there's a, um, 
900 a year, 18 and 3600 a year. And there's different levels of exposure um, commensurate with that. Yeah. And it can be paid monthly, or some businesses pay a year in advance, and then you get a free month, so it's even less. And, and we'll have Sydney walk you through the marketing benefits, because it's not a donation. It's a, it's a marketing benefit to your company. Mm. It's, a, it's on that business side of the equation, not the, not the nonprofit side of the equation. <clears throat> so we'll put you in touch with Sydney on that. So um, if you want more information, I would definitely say uh, set up a one-on-one -on -one with Eric.